Hi, this is Kay from Clever Someday. A lot of you know I love the paint bucket in Inkscape. And so today I'm going to show you why I love it and give you some tips so that you can love it too. The first thing we need to do is deal with the defaults because Inkscape is funny with defaults and especially the paint bucket, it just seems to change the settings at random. So the first thing we want to do is click on the paint bucket. It's right here. Uh, towards the bottom of your toolbar, once you've selected the paint bucket, you'll see this bar here with all of the different settings for the paint bucket there. You want to click on this little paintbrush and that resets the defaults for you. And you want to make a habit of always doing that before you do anything because if it gets out of whack, um, you can have really unexpected results or long delays. The second thing I want to do is I want to change the paint buckets fill and stroke so that I can see what I'm doing. I like to use the hot pink outline. Um, if you've seen some of my other videos, you know that. So I drew a, a circle here with the attributes I wanted. It is uh, has no fill and it has a hot pink outline and a stroke of, of one pixel width. So once I draw that, I select it and then I double click on the paint bucket to bring up its settings and I'm going to choose create new objects with instead of last used style I'm going to go this tools own style and then I'm going to say take from selection and you'll see that it's changed this to make a fill of none, a stroke of hot pink and a pixel width of one. So now when I use the paint bucket I'm going to have the pink outline every time that makes it very helpful to see what I'm doing. So I've typed in a K here and this is just text. If you watch the, the bottom of your screen down here, the info bar is very helpful using the paint bucket and anything else in Inkscape. I'll be referring to that often. So this is a, a text letter K and it hasn't been converted to path or anything. And one of the nice things about the paint bucket is it works on bitmaps, it works on text, it works on objects and it works on paths and other vectors. It's unlike the auto trace that can only trace bitmaps, this can trace anything. And it is important that you understand a paint bucket isn't like it is in a paint or photo program where it's just recoloring pixels, it's actually drawing a new vector on top. So it, once you get the, the um, gist of that, it, you can find a lot of ways to use this. So I'm going to go back over here and get my paint bucket and I want to outline the K and all I do is go inside the color and click and these de default settings worked very nicely. I can pull this off here and show you that I have a separate vector and that um, that was a way to trace in one click. And if I don't like that trace or if I want it out of the way, the nice thing is is it's all so easy to see what you're doing. You just delete and, and do it again if you didn't like the settings. I want to use this K to show you what uh, some of these settings are. I'm going to first show you the Grow Shrink setting. If you look up here you have a Grow Shrink setting and if we set that to five points and we click, now it's not going to trace the border but it's going to trace the border and then outset that five points. If we use a negative number then it will inset it. So this is a setting that you can use to, to make all different kinds of effects similar to inset and outset but with a little bit more control. For instance if I want to make a file that I can use with the markers to fill in the letters I can pick a setting and click and I can click again and click again and click again and so on until I fill the area with strokes and then this would be a very useful file to draw and color in a letter with Cricut markers for instance. So that's one thing you can do with the paint bucket very quickly and easily. The next setting I want to show you is the close gaps setting and I've just drawn a, a shape here and I've intentionally left a hole in it. The paint bucket fills the enclosed area and if it's not enclosed then you have basically a leak and the paint bucket instead of flood filling everything it it just gives you an error in the bottom that says 
area not bounded. So if I click here, you'll see the area is not bounded, cannot fill message. So what I want to do is I want to ask Inkscape to close the gaps for me. I'm going to go back to the regular defaults and then choose small gap and try it again. And there it did. It, it closed the gap here, treated this as a solid line, and gave me a trace just like I wanted. This is really useful with coloring book pages that are hand drawn, especially a lot of times the, the lines don't come together cleanly. You can use the paint bucket tool to smooth that right over without having to go and manually close all those gaps. So that's what the closed gap setting is about. If the small didn't work, we could try medium and then large. You have three different settings. They correspond to two, four, and six pixels, I believe. And so they're useful when you want to close a gap and have a shape treated as a closed object. The next thing I want to show you is how the threshold works. And I have here an image that I got from Lettering Delights, their Modern Mist collection. And there's some things with this tool that are just not really intuitive, but I hope I can demonstrate to you. If we make this small, the quality of the trace is actually dependent on the resolution of the picture on your screen. So if I zoom way out to where I have a small image, I can trace, but I won't get the kind of quality I will if I zoom in. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to I'm going to trace her leg here. I'm going to drag that out of the way. I'm going to zoom in to where those legs are as big as I can get them on the screen. And then I'm going to do the same trace and I'm going to show you the difference in quality. Okay, so if you look at these two, you see that the, the one that's zoomed in is a beautiful trace. This one, not so much. So the first thing you want to do when you're going to trace a bitmap with the paint bucket is to set the zoom level so that you get all the image you can possibly get into the screen. Everything has to be showing, but not so big that it's pixely or jagged edges. I want to show you what the default paint bucket setting will do. It's really good for solid colors. It's set to 15, which means it's going to click that color value and plus or minus 15. So when we click on the orange, we get just the orange. We can even get this green here that would be very difficult to get under auto trace still using the default setting of 15 works for the tan for the dark pink and so on so we'll clear this out of the way so we can show you how to adjusting the setting helps helps you do other tasks with the paint bucket so let's say I want this to be a solid dress so I'll run this up here over 40 and I'll click and you'll see that it selected everything except the the white flowers and her hands and so I can t easily take this delete the flowers uh, just connect this node with this node and this node with this node and, and have the whole dress together which is very useful and, and uh, a quick way to, to turn a pattern into a solid. So those are just some of the ways I use the paint bucket and how I adjust my defaults and my settings to make it do what I want. I hope that helps you. I hope you enjoy using the paint bucket as much as I do. Thanks a lot.